I started the diet, drinking that herbal tea and taking magnesium and aged garlic extract for my blood pressure. I was in stage 3B with my EGFR down to 39 and now it's back over 60. Can you imagine? Oh, what an incredible achievement! Catherine here, I'm a doctor in natural medicine and I have been helping CKD patients for more than a decade now. And today, I'm beyond excited to share with you a truly inspirational story from one of my patients and a loyal follower here on Double O Kidney, Matthew. Yes, nothing fires me up more than getting messages like this one from you guys. Let's read it. I had a fantastic consultation with you and being your patient has completely turned my life around. I can't even believe it. Today, September 30th, I no longer have CKD. I was in stage 3B with my EGFR down to 39 and now it's back over 60, putting me in stage 2. Can you imagine? I started the diet drinking that herbal tea and taking magnesium and aged garlic extract for my blood pressure. Wow, this is what I'm talking about. What an absolutely incredible achievement. Matthew, thank you for sharing your journey with us here on Double Okini and huge congratulations on your amazing progress. You earned this. And make no mistake, this isn't my success. This is yours. I may have given you guidance, but you are the one who made the choice. You followed the diet, you committed to exercising every day, and you took control of your health. That's something to be proud of. And guys, what Matthew did is outstanding. I mean, this man is really committed to his health. Just think that despite being in stage 2 again, where the renal diet is not a requirement anymore, I made him promise he won't start eating steak and fries again, which is really something. And he is also still taking the other supplements I recommended. Magnesium and garlic pills for blood pressure. The CoQ10, this is very important, but not just for cholesterol levels. And the detoxifier, the chirosan. More about this later in this video. And of course, I won't violate this patient's confidentiality, but I have his permission to share with you the supplements he is taking and why he takes them. Because a lot of people, we're curious to see which tea he's using to achieve this incredible result. A lot of people ask about this tea and the other supplements he is taking in the comment section. Do you want to see them? So let's start with the tea. This is actually coming from a recipe I posted on Double Okini back in 2021. And today I will share with you an updated version. So let's see how to make it very quickly since it's a very easy tea to make. First, you want uva ursi leaves, a powerful natural remedy. This herb has two ways of helping our kidneys. First, it will reduce the inflammation in the kidneys and urinary tract. It's a natural anti-inflammatory with pain-relieving properties. Second, it works as a gentle detoxifier. And here is singing nettle. Because of its natural anti-inflammatory and pain-relieving properties, nettles have been used for centuries to treat sore, stiff muscles and joints. But the reason why this is in this tea is the blood pressure and blood sugar-reducing properties this herb can offer. By the way, singing nettle is a really common weed that grows in gardens almost everywhere in the world. And well, it stings. It causes rashes, so never touch it with your bare hand. And here is juniper berry. These are the berries of the juniper tree, an evergreen shrub that grows in many parts of the world. They won't just make our tea taste great thanks to their tart, spicy flavor. Juniper berries are also a stimulant for the kidneys and bladder, and they help flush out impurities and toxins. Juniper berries are also rich in essential oils and flavonoids that function as potent antioxidants. Lasting here, probably the most important, 
Astragalus. This is definitely one of the most powerful adaptogens on Earth when it comes to protecting the kidneys. Astragalus is incredibly effective against the progression of kidney disease. In this study, this remedy was able to significantly lower creatinine levels of stage 4 and 5 kidney disease patients. Now, astragalus and juniper berries are usually sold either whole and dried or already crushed. I will need to crush them before preparing the tea, but you can also buy them in powder if you prefer. Now, this tea should be prepared in a special way so the effects of these herbs may be more potent. This is what us natural doctors call a decoction. To do that, these herbs need to soak in water for 2 to 4 hours before making the tea. Now they're ready to boil. When it boils, reduce heat and let simmer for 20 to 30 minutes. Strain, allow the tea to cool and drink. Now, this is an herbal tea with very powerful detoxing and blood pressure lowering properties. It also reduces fasting sugar levels. So make sure you are keeping track of these levels alright because you see, you don't want to end up with too low blood pressure or blood sugar. But on the other hand, if you use this tea to decrease your need for medications, especially medications for high blood pressure, you are going to be on the road to a better kidney function. Okay guys, another thing that really helped Matthew in my opinion is the detoxifier he is taking. This is something called Kytosan and it's an amazing way of protecting the kidneys. Now, if you follow me here regularly, you probably know how most detoxifiers work. They are taken before food so they can bind in the intestine to all those toxins we don't want to go from your food to your kidneys, alright? And my good recommendation is usually acacia fiber. Acacia fiber has been widely tested in advanced stage kidney disease patients. It's safe and it works. But why have I recommended Kytosan to this patient, you may ask? Well, first of all, because Kytosan was also tested in CKD patients and on dialysis patients as well. This study examined the effects of Kytosan on 80 patients with stage 5 kidney disease. Half of the patients were given Kytosan tablets three times a day. The result, after just four weeks, Test subjects had a very significant reduction in creatinine levels compared with the patients in the control group. We are talking about 13% reduction in creatinine levels here. And that's clearly a lot, especially in stage 5 patients. But you see, that effect could have been obtained with acacia fiber as well. Why using chitosan then? Well, because most people use Kytosan not for kidney disease, but for another problem, cholesterol. Kytosan is a popular cholesterol-lowering remedy which is often used to aid weight loss. This is why it's so easy to find in supplement stores and why it is so cheap. Actually, it is derived from the exoskeletons of shellfish, chitin, which has the peculiarity of actively absorbing fats. In the past, this product was even used to detoxify water for drinking purpose. When spread upon the water's surface, chitin absorbs greases, oils, heavy metals, and other toxic substances so completely that an easy removable scum forms on the surface of the water and it does basically the same thing in the digestive tract. This is why today chitosan is sold over the counter as a fat blocker. It binds to fat and cholesterol in the intestines preventing their absorption. So yeah, the reason why I could recommend acacia fiber to one patient and chitosan to another one is because different detoxifiers have different properties. In many cases, you can get two birds with one stone and that's always a good thing when the patient is already taking several other supplements and medications. And guys, if you want some help in solving this whole detoxifier conundrum, or if you want me to create a personalized plan for you as well, now it's your time. I've started offering remote one-on-one -on -one video naturopathic consultations and let me tell you, I've already met some absolutely fantastic people from this very community, just like Matthew. These are folks who are not only knowledgeable about their health, but also determined to improve it. And now with my direct guidance, 
They're taking their health to the next level. And I've decided to free up even more time in the coming weeks so I can help more of you with my expertise. This is your chance to get the answers you need personalized just for you. So if your goal is to protect your kidneys and you're tired of playing the guessing game, wondering what works and what doesn't, stop waiting. Send me an email to katherine at newhopeforkidneypatients.com and let's talk. You'll also find a link in the description to contact me directly because your health is too much important to leave to chance. Let's take control together. Speaking of which, another very important intervention I recommend Matthew in order to take control of his own health was the use of certain blood pressure lowering supplements. Yes, when I recommended these supplements to Matthew, I wasn't just doing it because I like spending my evenings doing research about the best supplement brands and the level of their quality control. Now guys, let me warn you, if you ever book a counseling session with me, you're gonna get a free no escape all inclusive lecture about keeping your blood pressure below 130 over 80. Yep, it's baked right into the price. There is no avoiding it, there is no running from it. I mean, running would help with blood pressure, but let's not digress. Because you see, the way you stop kidney disease is by taking as little medications as possible, but you still need your blood pressure to be under control. Now, as Matthew so kindly shared in his post, I threw a handful of supplements his way to keep his blood pressure from turning into a fire-breathing dragon. First up, magnesium. If you're low on this magic mineral, your blood pressure is gonna shoot up faster than your cat climbing the curtains at 4 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. Magnesium deficiency is super common in CKD patients, especially the ones taking vitamin D supplements or diuretics. So basically, 90% of you. This is why if you have kidney disease, you should probably supplement magnesium. And as you can see, I also recommend Matthew taking aged garlic soft gels, the herbal tea we just saw, CoQ10 and more. So a whole lot of supplements and remedies for his blood pressure. Now at this point, I know that you're thinking, why are you so obsessed with getting people to lower their blood pressure naturally? And honestly, I'm glad you asked. Here's the deal. Blood pressure management is paramount in treating kidney disease. Let me break this down. If you want to do what Matthew did, improve your kidney function, then never, never ever let your blood pressure go above 130 over 80. I don't care if you're running late to your yoga class or if you just saw the price of eggs for the first time since 2019. Just keep it in check. This goal can be reached naturally by taking certain supplements as we have seen and also with the diet and with light exercising. However, for some patients, these natural interventions are still not enough. What I want to tell them is Keep taking your blood pressure medications. All right. And I get it. No one likes swallowing pills that come with a three-page list of side effects. But trust me, it's better than the alternative. Guys, this is a pretty serious issue. I know that some of you think blood pressure meds are heavy on the kidneys. Well, yeah, they're not exactly giving your kidneys a bubble bath. But not taking them? That's like running a bulldozer over your kidneys. So if you're not feeling the whole bulldozing your kidneys vibe, take your meds, make sure your blood pressure is always below 130 over 80. And guys, these supplements are powerful, no doubt about it. But if you ask me what the most important part of your treatment is, I'll scream it from the rooftops. The diet. Yes, I said it, the diet is the king, queen, and full royal court of CKD treatment. Why you ask? Because nothing is as tested, as proven, and as reliable as a CKD treatment as the renal diet. I'm talking tried and true, people. Countless patients have felt this on their own skin. These patients, they start to improve as soon as they start to eat, you know, bell peppers instead of eggs and asparagus salad instead of hamburgers. Or when they start eating spelt and vegetable soup instead of spaghetti and meatballs. 
which is, by the way, isn't even a real Italian dish. Yeah, I'm not joking here. Try ordering that in a restaurant in Italy and tell me what they tell you. But you see, even if the renal diet works like nothing else, I'm usually not too pushy about it. I'm not out here like a diet dictator banging my furs on the table. I'm not going to force you into this. I can't physically make you eat the right things unless I crawl into your kitchen and start slapping burgers out of your hands, which would be illegal probably. All I can do is guide you in the right direction. But I want to be very clear on this. Diet and lifestyle changes are the only thing in the world that can lower your proteinuria levels without side effects. They can make you lose weight and reduce your fasting sugar levels without taking pills or insulin injections. They can decrease cholesterol, lower your blood pressure, and they can ultimately change your fate with kidney disease. But only you can decide to start a journey to improve. I can prepare you a diet plan. I can show you what exercises are safe for you. But you are the one that must do those things every day. And yes, I understand that switching from a regular old diet to a low protein, plant-based diet is a lot easier said than done. Adopting a low protein diet is like hiking through rough terrain. You'll struggle a bit at first, but the fresh air at the summit is priceless. So yeah, I can show you the right direction, but you have to get there. Actually, there is one more thing I can do for you. I can advocate for you because many doctors will still tell their kidney patients that there is no improving with kidney disease, that you can, at best, try to control the decline of your kidney function. Ah, if I had a dollar for every time I heard about that, I'd retire and buy myself an avocado farm. Hmm. But here's the truth. Science and my own experience proves these doctors wrong every single time. And when a doctor or worse, some glorified researcher tells you that you don't need to follow a renal diet anymore and just need to pop a few more pills, I get so angry. I could set off car alarms with my sheer rage. In fact, there is a recent study floating around out there that says patients don't need a renal diet anymore. Just take more pills. Mm. Guys, do you want to see me debunk this paper and some more disinformation as well? My recent video up here is for you if you missed it. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Take care. Bye-bye.